Now I want to talk to you about how to write our null and alternative hypotheses more specifically. Researchers want to make sure we account for all possible outcomes. And one of the things that we can learn to do early on is to be very clear with our language, what we're looking at. Just like earlier in the course, I taught you what an um, independent variable was and a dependent variable or an experiment. Using all of that language helps us all to make sure we're on the same page when we're doing our um, analyses and our conclusions. So it's very important that we set up our um, hypotheses very clearly so that when we make a final conclusion, everyone understands what's happening. So this picture we had in our previous lecture, this is kind of the idea where we're trying to decide, are you from the blue distribution or the green distribution. And so again, the null hypothesis is the idea that there is no green distribution, that everyone's from a blue distribution, that we, we kind of see the blue distribution and the green one is a kind of a, a theoretical idea. And so our null hypothesis is that everyone is the same. The alternative hypothesis is that the green distribution exists and that the individual or sample that we're looking at is from that green distribution. So let's talk about how um, this would be worded. You will always start with our research question. And the wording of the research question is so critical that for the first few weeks that we do this, I will give you the wording of the research question and then um, I will teach you how to word it yourself. But it's kind of helpful just to see them in practice for a few weeks so you can kind of get used to the language that's used. But you can see here I have a very boring research question. Is my person different from the population. So the population in this case would be the blue distribution. So what I like to do in helping you make sure you word your hypotheses perfectly is I like to start with taking this question, is my person different from the population, and turning it into just a boring statement. So how can you take this question, is my person different from the population, and make it into a statement about that person? So hopefully you came up with, we're going to put this into a statement. My person is different from the population. So this is my alternative hypothesis, right? My person is from the green distribution. So if I take my research question, is my person different from the population, and I make it into a statement, it would be my person is, a diff my person is <laughs> different from the population. Now I have to figure out how to make the null hypothesis. And the, the null hypothesis, again, is that this person is from the blue distribution or is from the population. So what can I do to this sentence? My person is different from the population. Is there anything I can add to it that would be the opposite of saying my person is different from the population? So what can I do to make this reversed? And hopefully you thought of the phrase, well, I could just add the word not. And that's exactly what we'll do. So the null hypothesis is that my person is not different from the population. So what you see I've done here is I made the steps a little easier. If you have the research question worded perfectly, then you can make, take that perfectly worded question, put it into a statement, and that will fit perfectly for the alternative hypothesis. Then you add the word not, and it works well for the null. So this is a good set of null and alternative because it's basically saying the person is not different from the population, so that means they're from the blue distribution, or the person is different from the population, meaning that they're probably from the green distribution. Now notice I didn't use the word, is my person the same as the population? This is what we're going to learn to work on when we're writing research questions. There's a few reasons why we don't want to do that. But right now, what I'd like you to take away is we're not going to say, is my person the same? Because remember, we're never trying to prove that people are the same. We're always trying to prove that people are different. That's kind of our, our focus. So trying to make a research question to prove people are the same is not going to work. And that would have messed up these whole uh, steps here. So remember, we're always going to be talking about differences when we build our research question. All right, so let's try a different scenario. Now, in a, in a, a future video, I'm going to talk about um, what happens if we have a research question that's a little, little bit more complicated. And instead of just saying different, maybe I'm going to be more specific and say, is this person smarter or something like that. So we're going to learn all about how to do that. But I want to show you that if I have a more complicated research question, these steps for writing the null and the alternative still work. So if my research question is, is my person higher than the population? So notice that's a very specific question now. It's not just different, but higher. 
So if I take that question and make it into a statement, that would be my person is higher than the population. So that's all alternative hypothesis. Oh, and let me point out, notice that I have a symbol here. HA stands for the hypothesis alternative. So we're going to go HA colon and then write the sentence, my person is higher than the population. Now, if I want to reverse that, I would just simply add the word not. So think about where you would add that. And then the null hypothesis is my person is not higher than the population. And so again, we are going to note null hypothesis as H0. That's kind of like zero for nothingness, right? Um, so H0 means the null hypothesis. Uh, students sometimes will say the ho and the ha. Please don't say that. It's not a ho and a ha. This is the null hypothesis and this is the alternative hypothesis. But what we can see is even though we asked a more specific research question, the steps of making a statement and adding not still worked. And the reason I emphasize this is because later on down the road, we will ask some very complex research questions. And students can sometimes get confused about how to write the null and the alternative because there's so many pieces in that research question. And I want to highlight that this step of making it into a statement and adding not will always work for you. All right, so the, one of the things that my students have sometimes stumbled on is trying to remember that the null hypothesis is really about everyone's from the blue distribution. So when I'm in class, I go, hey everybody, repeat after me, the null hypothesis is no difference. And I make them do it over and over again, and now they're well trained to where if I say null hypothesis, they say no difference. So I do it several times. I go, hey, null hypothesis, and they shout, no difference. And I say, what about it? Null hypothesis. And they say, no difference. And the reason I do that is because the null hypothesis really is always about we didn't find a difference there. It can get more complicated as we have more complicated questions, but really it always comes down to the essence of we didn't find an effect or we didn't find a difference. So if you can keep that in mind, it helps you understand that the null hypothesis is everyone's from that blue distribution and there really isn't a difference. All right, so now I wanna talk about, um, I really just can't remember. Oh, that's right, <laughs> I wanted to do an example. <laughs> I wonder if I can cut that out. All right, so. Now I want to talk about, uh, or now I want to go through an example and see if we can put what we just learned into practice. So let's say our research question is, Dr. Dam's class does, sorry, does Dr. Dam's class have different success rates than average classes? Now, um, I'm still teaching you how to word research questions, but I'd like to point out, notice this isn't in the past tense. I didn't say did Dr. Dam's class, because past tense suggests we're just describing what we've already seen. Inferential statistics is a general conclusion um, in general. I want to know if I could cure cancer for everyone, right? So these are always going to be in the present tense. So does Dr. Dam's class have different success rates than average classes? So let's take that and add, um, sorry, add a statement or make that into a statement. So alternative hypothesis should read, Dr. Dam's class does have different success rates than average classes. Or you could have said Dr. Dam's class has different success rates than average classes. It's whichever um, makes you feel comfortable with rewording it. So now we have to add that not. So you might want to think about where that goes. And this would be then, the null hypothesis would say that Dr. Dam's class does not have different success rates than average classes. So what we've learned to do here is build our null and alternative hypotheses. We are now very clear as to what we are assessing and what we are going to be concluding at the end of the day. In the um, future lecture about um, directionality and asking more specific questions like is, you know, Bob smarter than everyone else, I will also be sharing with you how some of these things would look if we were just going to be writing them out with symbols because I can write a null and alternative as a sentence or I can use mathematical symbols. So we'll discuss that further when we're looking at the more complex um, known alternative hypotheses that we might be putting forward.